Hello! In this video, we are going to go over our last section in Unit 4, Section 4.8, and we are going to be discussing isosceles and equilateral triangles. So we're going to begin with isosceles triangles, and I want to label this first triangle with some vocabulary. So as we have um, learned or discussed in the past, isosceles triangles have two sides that are equal. So those two sides are called legs. Okay, so let's label the two congruent sides are called legs. Now that third side that is not equal is called the base. So isosceles triangles have two legs and one base. The angles also have a name. So these two angles here that are at the end of the base, they're called base angles. So I'm just gonna label here base angle, and then this is another base angle. Now, number three here on this diagram is not on the base. So I like to look at it as it's the angle formed by the two congruent sides. It's the angle formed by the legs. This is called the vertex angle. Okay, so sometimes you're provided um, information about a triangle and you might be provided the vertex angle. So therefore you can draw the picture out and know where that angle is located. All right, we have two theorems surrounding isosceles triangles. We have the base angles theorem and the converse of the base angles theorem. So the base angles theorem starts out, it says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. So if you look at your triangle, you know, obviously that you can see the two equal sides. So when it refers to angles opposite, it, it's if you literally drew an arrow and pointed. So angle B is opposite AC. Angle C is opposite AB. Okay, so the base angles theorem is saying that these two angles are congruent. The converse is exactly the reverse or the opposite. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. So if we start with the or the angles being congruent, then I know that the sides are congruent. Okay, so bottom line, if you have an isosceles triangle, you have two equal sides and two equal angles. So let's use that idea in these examples at the bottom. So number one, we are finding the measure of angle F. So the first thing I do is say, okay, this is an isosceles triangle. You need to mark the congruent angles. So I'm gonna put an arc on D and F. Okay, so I know they're equal. So if the top angle is 22, if that vertex angle is 22, I know that all three angles add to 180. So I can take my 180, take out 22, and I get what? Eight. I get 158. So that means 158 degrees is left over between D and F. Well, I need to split that in half because uh, D and F are the same. So 158, let's do some old school division here. Uh, two goes into 15, seven, 14, bring down the eight. Two goes into 18, nine. Okay, so that means D and F are both 79 degrees. Um, I really just need the measure of angle F. So I'll kind of complete my problem here. Measure of angle F equals 79 degrees. Now, if you like a more algebraic approach, you could, you could approach it this way. You could say, all right, if D and F are the same, I'm just gonna call them X. And so I know that all three angles add to 180, so you could write yourself this equation, X plus X plus 22 equals 180, and then you could solve it. You're gonna do the same thing we just did above, but it's just another way to think about it. But either way is fine. So I want you to try the next one. So please pause the video, work through number two, and then come back and check your answer. Okay, um, I know that the base angles are equal. So if I mark them, now I can just write an equation. I can set these equal to each other. Um, that would give me 2x is 44, divided by 2, 22, um, but I need g, so I'm going to plug my 22 in here. So 22 and 44 is 66, so I'll just add it here at the top. The measure of angle g is 66 degrees. 
All right, so two different types of problems, both utilizing that uh, base angles theorem from above. Okay, well, let's move on to the next example. So this next example is a proof to create the base angles theorem. Okay, so it's, we're proving this theorem. So that means we can't use this idea in the theorem. We're kind of approaching it from the perspective of Okay, I don't know this theorem exists, but I'm gonna prove that it's always going to happen every single time. So let's go ahead and write a proof. Um, one thing I wanna point out here, notice what you're proving. We're proving an angle is congruent to an angle. So when I'm trying to prove that pieces of triangles are equal, that's gonna be our CPCTC, our corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So I want to prove the two triangles are congruent first, and then I can move on to that, okay? So our first goal right now is to prove the triangles are congruent. So let's set up our statements and reasons, and I'm gonna get my givens in there. And I'll just put them all in line one. You can separate them if you like. And then JK congruent to JL, I'm gonna mark that. Okay, um, M is the midpoint of KL. So line two is directly related to that given. That means that M splits KL in half, which means the left and right, or in this case, the top and bottom sections are equal. So step two, I'm going to, first I usually like to mark it so I can see it. Midpoint split that in half. So that gives me that segment KM is congruent to segment LM, and that is our definition of midpoint. That's just what the midpoint does. Definition midpoint. Okay, I'm trying to prove the two triangles are congruent. So I am kind of done with Gibbons. Um, I have a reflexive though. Let's get that in there. So let's mark your reflexive. So line three, JM, segment JM, is congruent to segment JM. That's our reflexive property of congruence. And I see um, the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So step four. Now, this time I need to carefully name them because it's not provided above. So I'll just begin the first one as um, JKM. So when I name the second one, I need to go in that appropriate order. So JKM, that should be JLM. And I used SSS, side, side, side. So now that I have proven the triangles are congruent, all their corresponding parts are equal. So now I can finish with J congruent, angle J congruent to angle K. So step five, angle J is congruent to angle K, and this is my CPCTC. Or if you'd rather write out corresponding parts of congruent triangles or congruent, that would be fine. So what we just did here, we have shown that whenever you have, look at the big triangle, JKL, that K and L are always gonna be equal if the side lengths are equal because I can get to SSS and then get to CPCTC. So therefore, I don't need to do a proof every time to show that K and L are equal. I can skip straight to a theorem that says, if it's isosceles, the base angles are congruent. Okay, so that's kind of the idea behind that proof. Okay, let's keep going. All right, let's move on to equilateral triangles. So we've got a couple theorems here. They're actually corollaries, and corollaries are more like extensions of other theorems. So this is called corollary of the base angles theorem, corollary of the base, corollary to the converse. So it says, if a triangle is equilateral, then it's equiangular. So if the sides are equal, then the angles are equal. The other one is the reverse. It says if it's equal angular, then it's equilateral. Okay, so the main difference is kind of what comes first. 
equal sides, creates equal angles, or if you start with equal angles, you have equal sides. So they go hand in hand together. So I like to mark things up when I have that uh, situation. Okay, um, let's keep going on this. Use the information in the diagram to find the given information. So WY, so that means find the length of WY. Find the length of this segment right here. Okay, so here's what I see. I see this first. I see the base angles are equal, so let's mark the sides equal. So right there, I'm able to get that WY is equal to six. Okay, so WY is equal to six. And it's hard to explain why, but we're you, this is really the converse of the base angles theorem. That's why it's so important that you mark your diagrams up because as you think through what, what items are equal, you'll be able to get to, you know, your missing components. Okay, um, let me switch to blue. Measure of W, X, Y. So W, X, Y. I'm just going to put a dot right here. That's what I need to find. Okay, what's on my picture? All right, I see that um, this triangle is, the triangle over here, this triangle right here is equilateral. You've got your six, your six right here, and your six right here. So I'm actually gonna highlight that real quick. If I see that, then that means my um, angles are the same, it's equiangular. So because I already used a single arc, I'm just gonna go like this right now because I don't know that it's the same as the other. So the other thing about uh, equilateral triangles is if all the angles are the same and they all add up to 180, well, let's just divide it by three. So in equiangular triangles and equilateral triangles, the angles are always gonna be 60 degrees. Okay, so the measure of angle WXY is 60 degrees. So if you wanted to, I mean, that would be something you want, you could write up here. I mean, you're always going to have 60 on all three angles um, just because they're always going to be the same and they're always going to add to 180. Okay, let's keep going on this. A couple more questions here. Okay, number four, what congruence postulate can you use to prove ABC congruent to AED? So ABC, I'm going to mark on it and then maybe erase it. ABC is right here, AED is over here. Okay, so I'm focusing on the two side triangles. So let's kind of, we don't want to write a proof, let's just kind of talk through what we see. Um, okay, what do I have here? I have that, okay, here's one thing I notice. Look at the big triangle, AEB. Oops. I notice that it's isosceles. So I can go ahead and mark 40 over here because it's gonna be the same as angle B. Okay, so that's kind of my base angles theorem. Um, I also notice, well actually I have enough to uh, be done right here. So I'm just gonna jot a couple things down. I'm gonna say here that angle E is 40 degrees, measure of angle E. Um, that's your base angles theorem. That gives me side, side, side. So the congruence postulate I'm going to use is side, side, side. Okay, B. Why, explain why ACD is equiangular. All right, ACD is the middle triangle. Um, okay, we have here that, okay, here's one thing I'm gonna notice taking a step back. If angle C over here is 60, that means the angle right next to it's 120 because they're a linear pair. And if that angle is 120, that means D is 120 by CPC TC, because I already proved those two small triangles are equal, okay? And then, what else do I have? I also know back to the two side triangles that AC is going to be congruent to AD by CPCTC as well. Um, let's do another linear pair. So this angle is 60 because I already said that the 120 existed 
And if we do the math to get up here, the only answer that works here is also 60 degrees. Okay, so there's a lot to explain here, but I'm going to put letter B. I'm just going to say, um, use CPCTC. Then what we did is we actually used what's called the triangle sum theorem. That's the um, theorem that makes all three angles add to 180. Then triangle sum theorem. Okay, so that's a lot to go through, um, and it's not really like a formal definition, but that would be um, sort of like the series of events to get there. Okay, one more. Let's show that ABD, so ABD is this triangle right here, show that ABD is congruent to AEC. Okay. All right, so we've got, I'm just going to highlight a little bit and then kind of erase. I know that the double marks are equal to the double marks. There's a side, okay? I also know that I've got the red ones. Okay, so I've got, if I kind of, let me re-sketch here. I'll kind of talk about it and resketch. So let's let's draw the first one. A over to D, and then this is B. And then the other one, if I slid it over this direction, A is at the top, I've got C on the left, and then E. So the double marks are on AB, and the double marks are on AE. And then the red triple marks, AC has triple marks, and so does AD. So can we get um, one more thing, a side or an angle? So I've got, oh, right here, let me highlight. See the 60? Okay, so that 60 is right here. And then this 60 is over here. Does that give me, now that won't necessarily right there give me what I need because that is a side-side angle, but what else do I know? Oh, let's do the 40s. So angle B is 40, and then angle E is 40. Does that help me? Still gives me side-side angle. Uh, so I need one more thing. Let's see, can we get the angle A's at the top? Well, I, I can actually. I can actually do the math now. So if this is 60 and 40 on the bottom, that's 100. That makes 80 at the top. Now I can do my um, side angle side. Well, actually, I could have backed up. I didn't even need to do the 80. I could have done 40, 60, and this side would be angle, angle side. So there's a lot of ways to get here. Um, but what I want you to take away from this example is how to utilize the course or the uh, congruent triangles to get to CPCTC. We incorporated base angles, we incorporated, you know, triangle sum theorem, so everything kind of came together on this one. Okay, um, I want you to figure out five and six. So I want you to pause, spend some time We're working through five and six, and then when you come back, I'm going to have you check the answer. Okay, let's start with the answer, and if you don't get it, you can listen to the explanation. So, the value of x is 75, and the value of y is 21, and then on number 6, the perimeter is 25 units. Okay, so if you need to continue listening, um, here's how we solved the first one. Okay, um... There's a, I guess there's not one place you have to start. So what do I see? I see, okay, I see this. So that means whatever S is equal to, angle T over there is equal. That doesn't help me yet. Okay, let's, this one's equal angular. So I know these are all 60. And then... Okay, here's what I could do. I could calculate this angle right here 
because this is a line and all three of these angles have to add up to 180. Okay, so I've got, I could take 180, I could take out that 90, I could take out that 60, and I get 30 degrees. So I'm going to write 30 here. Now I'm going to focus on um, this triangle right here, this isosceles. So if this angle at the top is 30, and these two angles are the same, so I can take 180, remove the vertex angle of 30, and then cut that in half, divide by 2. So there is my 75, okay? For the value of y, okay, let's see. I've got, I'm going to change colors here. I know if I see 12 right here, I know that is 12 and this one is 12, which makes that one 12. So to get the value of y, I need this section right here, and then I'll just add it to this 12. So if I look at this triangle, it's a right triangle. So let's incorporate a topic that you may have studied a little in the past, but this is when we can use Pythagorean theorem. So what I can do here, I'm gonna put a little star. I can use Pythagorean theorem to find the star. So if I pull out just this triangle, I have 12 and I have 15. I don't know what that is. So what Pythagorean theorem allows you to do is um, your hypotenuse is C and then the two legs are A and B. So if we work through the formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, I'm gonna have X squared plus 12 squared is 15 squared. So I need to simplify, I need to raise the powers. So x squared, 12 squared is 144, 15 squared is 225. So let's take away 144 from both sides. 225 minus 144 is 81. Now you can square root. When you get it down to just the variable squared, I'm gonna come through here and square root. And so the square root of 81, it's a perfect square, is nine. So I now know that that is nine. And then now I can take nine plus 12 in order to get y, and that's where my 21 came from. Okay, the last one is a little bit quicker than that one. All right, I see that the base angles are equal, so I know the sides are equal. That's where I'm gonna begin. 2x minus one equals x plus four. So solve for x. I'm gonna take away x from both sides. That's gonna leave me x. I'm gonna add one to both sides and get five. But I need the full perimeter. So perimeter is adding all the sides. So let's figure out how long these sides are. They should be the same. Five plus four is nine. Two and five is 10 minus one is nine. Okay, so we're gonna do nine plus nine plus seven and that's where you get your 25. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Isosceles and equilateral triangle.